Thank you, Vicky and uh, Prof. Abiniko. Uh, so, uh, Prof. Abiniko has already highlighted some of the uh, ethical and, and social issues that we need to consider uh, when we develop a, bio, uh, a biorepository or when we collect samples for storage for future use. And so, the next uh, session will be more of a discussion. And we'll have, uh, I, I think, uh, Mario Wilson will share the link to the uh, files that we have for ASCENT and the data sharing policy uh, so that uh, we can all go through them and discuss, uh, just highlight what we think it needs to be discussed further or how it should be uh, sort of, if we need it to be reframed or to, to, to edit. And we'll do that in the breakout sessions. But I just wanted to highlight a few uh, things that will be important for that discussion. As I talked about this before, and uh, I wanted to sort of just highlight in this slide that the different African countries within uh, the circle in Africa have different requirements for ascent. And so in the, uh, you see that the age of written ascent varies. Uh, so for Ghana, it's between eight to 17 years. For Nigeria, it's 12 to 17. Uh, for Tanzania, it's not specified. Uh, so they would likely go with what the ethics committee recommends for them. In Uganda, it's eight to 17 years, similar to, to, to Ghana. In Zambia, it's not specified. Uh, Zimbabwe, uh, sorry. Uh, Zimbabwe has uh, five from five to 18 years require written assent. So you only get oral assent for le uh, children less than five. Uh, from five to 12 years, it should be tailored to the cognitive level for that age group. And from 12 to 18, it should mirror the parental consent uh, form. So, so this has implications for the sharing of uh, samples and data, because when it goes to the biorepository or to the database, these conditions need to be attached to. And so for Ghana, for example, we need to see that all persons eight to 17 years have actually provided written assent. Meanwhile, for Zimbabwe, we'll be expecting to see written assent for children as young as five. Uh, there are specific conditions that were assigned to the parental consent. Uh, and this is a discussion we had in the ethics work group. So Nigeria, for example, the national guidelines require that for children less than 12, you need the consent of both parents. Meanwhile, for children above 12, irrelevant parent or legal that, uh, parental consent from one parent should be sufficient. Uh, but there is a caveat there for, for less than 12, because they say that if only if just one parent is available, then you can get for that uh, one parent. And the question has been, how do you, you overcome the situation? What has been the, how has that been handled? And I think uh, Professor Kocha or, or Professor Nodu can, can talk more to, to, to that, but that's the national requirement for that country. Uh, I think for Zambia, and they say a parent is required, same for Tanzania. Uganda left it broad, they just said parent or guardian, so it may or may not be safe to assume that it is uh, one parent. So uh, Ghana doesn't specify anything on, 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 on that, so uh, perhaps the main thing there is uh, Nigeria. And uh, I thought and when we go to the breakout sessions, we should sort of discuss what should be included in the ascent forms. So the Global Alliance for Genomics, uh, Medicine and Health have developed a pediatric consent code. And, and these are codes that they, they, they sort of say, yes, this is 
how the sample can be used, this particular data could be used as such. And this is important, but it has to be shaped by your national uh, guidelines. But it's important that it is covered in the assent forms and in the parental consent forms. So uh, because it was developed for genomics medicine, maybe some of, for, for genomics research, some of the things may not really be pertinent for the consortium, but I found most of the uh, consent codes to, 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 be quite, to be quite relevant. So for example, they talk about is future studies mentioned in the ascent form and what was specified. Uh, do, do you need to recontact? upon uh, age of maturity. And we also looked at the national guidelines. I think that uh, the national guidelines across Africa are really silent on recontact at age of maturity, uh, but for I think South Africa and Algeria that has that specific uh, requirement. So I just start again that I should share what are the uh, national requirements for, for, for data and sample sharing. So this site, sorry, it should be sample sharing, not data sharing for the different countries within uh, SICL in Africa. Uh, so again, uh, Ghana is really silent on, uh, on much of that. So, so it is allowed, but there are no really specific uh, requirements as uh, for Mali, we couldn't get hold of the, the national uh, guidelines or regulation. Uh, Nigeria, is, again, is very flexible. There is that support for broad or tiered consent. It's okay. Uh, but perhaps we want to look at the Nigerian requirement for secondary use of samples. And the requirement there is that you need a principal investigator that is affiliated to a local institution. Uh, I, I think Professor Abimiku can, can highlight that more because that seems to be very different from Zambia because Zambia says a locally based PI. So, so, so that's a bit confusing if Nigeria, it is locally based or if it's okay if the PI is affiliated to, to that institution, even if they are not locally based. But uh, Prof Abimiku will be in a better position to clarify that. Uh, Tanzania for future use of samples, the MT, they have a, a standard material transfer agreement in their national guidelines. And it states that you maintain the consent that you obtained in the initial stage. And that you should state at the beginning whether or not a local Tanzanian uh, a, a local investigator will be involved in the analysis. So I, I, I think that keeps it open. Uh, and therefore the guiding principle there will be equity to uh, and, and capacity building. Uh, in Uganda, you need a separate consent form to seek uh, consent for any future use of, of, of uh, samples that you collect. And uh, the decision on whether the samples can be reused will be determined by the institution that has custodianship of, uh, of the samples. And Prof. Abimiku already talked much about uh, custodianship. Zambia also requires a separate uh, consent form if you plan to uh, use samples in the future. Uh, but Zambia specifically states that samples cannot be stored for more than uh, 10 years. And I think Prof. Abimiko already talked about that, that where you, you, you uh, have samples in a bar repository, uh, if the national requirements say, or the consortium or, or whatever uh, parties involved says 10 years, then after 10 years, a reminder needs to be set. So it's important that all of this is covered both in the consent and assent forms and uh, the, the data sharing agreements as well, so that the bar repository or uh, SADC is aware of these specific uh, requirements and it's clear in, in, in the consent forms. Uh, Zimbabwe doesn't talk much about the future use of samples, but in terms of sample storage, 
uh, the say the, the that extraterritorial storage of samples beyond the study period is not allowed. So, but I think the the the, uh, the PI of uh, Zimbabwe will know what that means in terms of uh, the sample storage, uh, especially as extraterritorial storage is not allowed beyond the study period. Wait, uh, so. Okay, so I think I talked about uh, the reconsent at the age of adulthood. And, and I think the age of adulthood is 18 for, for all the countries that are involved in uh, the sickle in Africa. So there was a general silence. So I, I don't know if it's something we should or should not worry about, but it's only South Africa that requires reconsent at 18, once the, the participant becomes 18, especially if the samples will continue to be used. Um, in the first presentation, I already talked about the data sharing policy for the consortium, which is just to ensure fair and equitable data sharing and research collaborations. And these are the different components of the data sharing policy. So when we review that, we look uh, at what the, the authorship is, uh, uh, policies, accountability, what archiving of data means uh, of data would look like. I think Prof. Koch has sort of signaled that for biorepositories, it also applies to data and the data sharing policy touches on that. The limits to the use of data and who would have access to the data. I think it's really important that we focus on that, uh, especially the, difference, uh, the differences between data access for consortium members and when the consortium actually opens up for third party use. A new thing uh, that we have is the possibility of the SQL in Africa uh, Data and Biospace Main Access Committee. So in the first phase, we, we had stated in the data sharing policy that uh, at some point, a data and biospace main access committee would be set up. Uh, that hasn't been done because uh, the objectives of the first phase was different, but it's now up to the consortium again to discuss whether that is how they wanted to go or whether the steering committee is what would work best for, for, for the consortium. So we've now included something around the debug, but that's mainly around who should form part of that, or if the steering committee, or if as a consortium, we are happy with the steering committee to make decisions around access and how the procedure will work. So SADAC will, will continue to provide secretarial support whether it's to the, the steering committee or the, the debug, depending on what we think as a consortium will work best. Okay, so the debug will mostly, if we want that, look at third party request, and it's important that we think about the composition. So when you go out to the breakout groups, if we think a debug is required, what should be the composition? Should we have sickle in Africa PIs? What percentage should all PIs be involved? Uh, in terms of disciplinary backgrounds, who should be there? Should we have patient representatives in the in the debug or in whatever committee we set up to make decisions on data and sample use? And how many of them should we also bring in non sickle in Africa members? How many and who should these people be? And to also discuss uh, around time limits. So how long does it take from the time you request access to the time you get? Uh, a response from the consortium. Hey, I already mentioned that SADAC will provide secretariat duties for, for, for that. So, so thank you. So I think uh, if there are questions, we can take uh, questions, but otherwise Mario will advise on the, 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 the breakout rooms and uh, they'll share a link to that has the, the, the ascent forms and the data sharing policy. And we can also use a jam board if we want to, to just post any thoughts we, we have. Thank you. Okay, I think that. Okay. I think there's a comment on in Zimbabwe, the MRC supersedes the JREC. Okay, and that written ascent for children seven to 17 years, uh, 
thank you, Tatsuzo. So I think we can take uh, questions from Vicky, from Prof. Lashley and... Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, and, and thank you, Dr. Uh, Bikini, for, for that. That was really very helpful. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's very helpful within the consortium to just see all the different palmitations that that we have to work with within the continent. But I, I just wanted to share something from H3 Africa also, um, that one thing that we have to be aware of, even as we uh, deal with the uh, provisions within the countries, especially in areas like sharing of data that is not well established. We had that issue also with H3 Africa. We have to keep in mind that the international body is also keeping an eye on this. Uh, remember that this is, this is funded by an international body. So anything that we do and publish, the global world is looking at the standards that we have set up for ourselves. And I would just encourage the consortium that we should go beyond the minimum. So sometimes countries have the barriers, right? They, they're neither here nor there, but I think that it is our, we owe it to grow, to, to continue to build that capacity and maybe make the condition a little more stringent. Yes, we can, we can satisfy the minimum requirement of the country, but where we can, improve and build and support the our participants better. I think we have to go beyond the minimum because again, the, the world is gonna turn around and criticize us uh, for just doing whatever it's, it's within because it's, it's kind of substandard within, within the context of global research. Then the other thing that I will share really quickly is that for DBAC, for our DBAC, actually we made it a point to make sure that none of the individuals that have interest in the research are part of the DBAC. So the PIs were not. We had international partners in the different areas. So we have an expert in biorepository, expert in data use, expert in, uh, for instance, in this case, sickle cell anemia and all of that, that had nothing to do with our, our project, but that, that our experts in the field and that would be in a position to consider a request that is submitted for additional sample and as additional sample sharing uh, that would make that. So maybe maybe in SADC we're thinking of a DBAC that is for the consortium as opposed to a DBAC that is for the consortium and outside the outside world. Um, in that case, I think we want a group that is that is fairly transparent and and non that that's not biased at all. So that that doesn't have a stake other than the fact that good research should continue with the samples over. Thank you, uh, Prof. Abimeko. Not sure if there are any other questions. Uh, if there are no questions, I think we, we can go to the breakout room. And I think uh, group two is back in the room. Hi, Malula is the group back. Everyone back in. Yes, we are back. Uh, thanks, Prof. Kocha. So I think we'll just report on some of the key points that came from uh, our groups. So I, I can start for group one and then we move to group two and group three in, in that uh, order. So for group one, we discussed the data sharing policy uh, and we touched 
around, we touched on the uh, membership for the DBAC. And uh, I think the, the consensus was that all the PIs should form part of the, the debate or whatever committee you want that will make decision on who accesses samples and data from, from the consortium. Uh, that we should have external members, uh, but that the external members should uh, be fewer compared to the, 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 the PIs. And we should consider having PIs for, um, sorry, external members from system networks that we know already, such as RADAC, especially as uh, they are well uh, knowledgeable around uh, Francophone Africa. And then there is also the inherent uh, network, which came up as a, a possible network that we should con we could consider having an external member from. Uh, there was also the agreement that we have patient representatives in the in the DBAC or the, the committee. Uh, we're not sure what number, but I think uh, that the, the seems to be the suggestion that it should be from all sides. Uh, and a key point was that uh, the countries should continue to have some control over uh, sample and uh, data use from the, the respective countries. And that we should, uh, the, the DBAC should have a diverse membership, especially uh, epidemiologists, uh, data scientists, and clinicians. And that when we open up to external members, we should be considering uh, expertise that may not readily be available on the, the, the continent. So for example, bioinformaticians, because if we already have representation from the continent, it would be better to get someone uh, from, sorry, if we already have that representation within Sickle in Africa, it is better. And then there was this, the uh, sort of consensus around that the, the debug should be more Afrocentric that we should have representation more from the, the, the continent. Yeah, so uh, I, I think it's that uh, the other members of group one can add, if, there is, if I've left out another key point or other key points. Yeah, I think that silence from my from my group members may mean that uh, I've covered all the points that were discussed. We can go to group two, uh, proper culture. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think somebody kept uh, minutes for us. It would be better for that person to report. We can add anything the person misses. Okay. Uh, was that was that Malula or Mike? Uh, I'm not sure. She was it was a lady. Uh, please, who was the person who summarized for us in group two? Is so the person here? So we didn't have um, notes like pre like the ones that were shared previously, but I think Malula can say a word or two from the summary that um okay um so cynthia uh could you project to what i mean you are not because there's some of the area that you also um touch base on so the first one was the policy to be discussed and reviewed by sites before being uh the final one so the country wants to provide their opinion and comments and make sure that there's ownership also. Um, so the second point was LC to be mainstreamed at all levels. So uh, should be, as we discussed at the consortium level, also we have to look at the government level and community level, make sure that you have the buying, but also protection of the community from the sample collected uh, that would be used to produce the data. So, um, 
So generally, um, we, we discuss around screening and approval processes while building capacity. So that is what came um, out from group number two. Uh, maybe group members, they can add if um, I have left a point. Okay, I, I think we also agree that it will be good for us to have uh, a data collecting tool that is um, is is the same, if if not common, very a tool that everyone, all the consortium consortium wide data collecting to or data collection tool that would assist us. Um, we also noted that uh, it would the, we we could engage with government to. Uh, to suggest some of the policies that are presently lacking as far as data, uh, data sharing is concerned. Um, we also noted that it's our, our, our um, outlook must be Afrocentric as much as possible so that we can build capacity in our continent and, and grow. I think these are the main issues that we noted. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. Um, so Cynthia, we, we have another one, uh, which I think is going to add a value on this one. So um, I think it goes to the point that you put in here, countries have um, established data sharing agreement, but we have, a different approach on that, that consortium should find a way on how to integrate the LC guideline on repository. So, but also we discuss about the laws and guidelines of the country to be transparent. So uh, we can use this as part of the dialogue, making sure that we have access for the existing ones. And if we don't, uh, then we have to make sure that um, our intention is clear. So at some point it has to have a positive kind of um, um, engagement to the government. Okay, please. I think we, we there's someone with us uh, who also from the government noted that some of these laws are, are, are in place. And we noted that if they're in place, they should be brought into the public space because most times when we look for them, we don't find them. And it's very easy for people to take advantage of the communities when these laws, even if they are in place, are not in the public space. So I think that that's another thing we said. So Cynthia, generally you may find some of the to-do lists, but when it comes to having the local context, it will have an impact on how country will provide input on the policy. So that's all from um, group number two. Uh, thank you, group two. So I, I, I think group two is really suggesting a wider stakeholder engagement with the policies that we have so that we can get uh, more buy-in at the international uh, level. And uh, it's good that the Afrocentricity thing is coming up again. So that's two groups. So thank you, group two. So we'll hear from group uh, three. Uh, thanks, um, thanks, Cynthia. We actually worked on the policy document itself and made some comments um, <clears throat> as we're moving. And I will welcome any members to add to um, the, the comments we made and that we, so we felt um, that in the principles, we needed to be upfront um, about making the data fair 
because I think some of the statements, two statements or two principles kind of merged and they implied that we wanted to make data fair. We thought that could be made upfront. And then about um, who is that party and when would they be given access to data is something that was brought up as well. And I think group one has already brought up that, um, I think you, you mentioned Red Act and Inherent, uh, but I think a question is um, who are the third parties and when do they get access to the data? Um, and we also discussed briefly um, we also discussed briefly uh, the use of data. Here it says it's limited to projects on sickle cell disease or related hemoglobinopathies. And I think the discussion was around uh, maybe also include other NCDs or health related complication, but restrict to sickle cell disease and related hemoglobinopathy at the beginning because um, the database I think will be um, a resource that can be mined for many other health complications in the future. And um, another aspect was that internal users um, should include funding or the funding body as NHLBI, because I think we only included project staff um, for, and then for data, we understood that a PI cannot just share data within the consortium or outside. Um, and we, the discussion was that maybe SADAC should make sure that there is a request form for transparency of who's analyzing what data and when from whom. And also that some of the roles that SADAC had been given should actually be a debug and steering committee mandate, not a SADAC mandate. For example, actually checking whether, um, uh, you know, who is applying and what the intentions are and so on um, to do the investigations on, um, on whether they should be given access and for, you know, for what reasons. And then another aspect was that the biospecimens that we're discussing um, I guess that also pertains to the data because that has been brought up was what type of samples Uganda has um, blood to be collected at baseline from all registry participants and to be stored in a biorepository, but what have the other sites decided will be collected um, and what should be stored in the biorepository at the baseline. Uh, we thought this is something that should be discussed upfront and uh, decided within this meeting. And um, then um, we also briefly talked about benefit sharing uh, because I think there was a concern about um, commercial gains from what we're doing. Uh, the question was what if a pharmaceutical company requests for data, um, should only researchers get access um, and could it be possible that our policies state upfront that anyone requesting um, uh, data or samples should disclose their intentions upfront? Um, I think that's about it from us. And I think the last key points that we discussed was, would it be possible for us to continue with the data sharing policy discussion tomorrow? so that we can at least finalize something and agree on um, what needs to be collected at baseline, you know, just clarify um, a, a lot of things um, as, as well as the, um, just make sure that we've got something tangible we've completed during this meeting, which will then be passed over to the steering committee for, um, for approval and, and, and further discussions. Uh, I'm not sure, I think I will, ask the group to, to add anything I might have missed um, or comment on anything I've missed, uh, but we did work on the Google, um, Google policy document that was shared earlier and anyone can actually access our comments. Uh, that's it from me, maybe members of the group. I'm not sure if anyone wants to chip in if I missed or misinterpreted anything. Thank you.
NCBC, uh, are there any other comments from group three? Okay, great, thanks, thanks everyone for, for working on the data sharing uh, policy and for, for the comments. Uh, I think we have uh, quite a lot of things to work on and to revise the, the, the policy. Uh, but I think the suggestion that we continue working on that tomorrow is great because uh, then people may have time to sort of look at it again before, the meet, before we meet tomorrow or think about some of these key issues we have raised. For example, uh, stating about whether pharmaceutical companies should have access upfront, what benefit sharing means, who is a third party and when. I think that question is really important because we, we carry that over from phase one. At what time should third parties be able to have access and who do we consider uh, as a third party? Right. So, um, yeah, so I think we can continue working on that tomorrow or on the policy tomorrow. And thanks, Group 3, for the edit you made directly on the document. I think Group 2 did the same as well. So thank you. OK, please, can I just add something concerning the pharmaceutical companies that may want access? And not only pharmaceutical companies, really. Um, many other companies may want access for commercial purposes. And that is not necessarily a bad thing. But we must make sure that we protect our people and make sure that the benefits should also get to them. So, for example, they want to use these samples for commercial purposes. Then the people who donated those samples, there should be something in it for them. Our own consortium should have something. And of course, they will also have something. And those people should also give consent before their genetic material is submitted to people who want to uh, use it for commercial purposes. And then we must also insist that whatever uh, purposes commercial, uh, commercially they want to do should not be, the genetic material should not be taken out of the continent. They should bring their capacity into our continent and we build capacity to also do those things. That's, that's how everybody benefits. So these are some of the things that uh, I think we should have in mind as we move forward. And not only us, we should also engage with our governments to make sure that this is the way things happen. We have for far too long um, depended on extraterritorial capacity and built none. And this is not good force. Thanks very much, Prof. Kocha. I really like the idea of what goes back to the community. And I think that's a topic that people have, or, or consortia have generally struggled with. So, so there is this uh, other project, the variant bio, that is really seeking ways of how can we really give back to the community? What does it mean? And what is it that they want? And I think that uh, working with the patients this past two, three years, that question keeps coming and we never have a direct answer to them. So it's a question that they always ask at the level of the LC, like what is it for in for us or are, is, are we just here to support you uh, collect data? So I think at some point that question will come out more prominent and it is important that we begin to engage with it and a statement like that or on that on the data sharing policy will be good also for accountability purposes. So thank you for, for, for that proposal. Is there, are there any other comments, suggestions? So, so thanks everyone. We'll continue working on this tomorrow. Uh, Vicky.
thank, thank you, Nchapi. Uh, yes, did you want to say something? No, I'm, I'm good. I'm handing over to you for the next step. Oh, okay. No, I, I think uh, I just want to thank um, everyone for the participation and the input today. And I think if we can uh, really um, decide on the data sharing policy upfront um, and discuss all the pertinent issues um, so that we actually move forward, that would be great. I think, Munchanku, um, you also mentioned the publication policy is something that we could also discuss. Uh, because I think that will go hand in hand in a lot of the activities that we do. So that could also be done tomorrow. And my understanding is that we will set aside um, some time um, on, on Thursday to look at the Tanzania data elements uh, on Thursday and also discuss some of the upcoming research in terms of planning. Um, so I think um, so far the workshop is going great and um, I think I just want to thank everyone for their participation and input. We've actually realized that um, there is no way that SADC uh, and CC will be doing training all the time. It will really be participatory training where we leverage on expertise that we noticed exist across the sites and we work together in a collaborative manner. I think that's about it from me. Enjoy your evening and any feedback and um, is, is most welcome. We've shared a feedback form with uh, uh, project managers at sites so that um, they can just write notes at the end of each day. So if you've got feedback, you can reach out to them or contact us directly so that we keep improving the, the workshop as we progress. Thank you so much. <laughs>